Hello, and welcome to Season 2 of the Revenue Marketing Report powered by CaliberMind. Our goal on the RMR is to help marketers move from subject matter experts to strategic business partners. I'm your host, Kamala Thompson, and today I'm thrilled to introduce Matt Baum. Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks for having me, Kamala. Um, so uh, as uh, Kamala mentioned, my name is Matt Baum. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Funnel IQ. Uh, Funnel IQ is a, a software solution uh, that provides you with a revenue command center uh, where we're built for people in revenue operations. And in addition to Funnel IQ, I'm also the co-founder of RevOps Co-op, which is a, uh, an online uh, community for people in revenue operations. Uh, currently has 4,000 plus people across 35 plus different countries and about 1,500 different companies that uh, participate in, uh, in the community. And in addition to all of that fun stuff, uh, my favorite M and M is the peanut butter M and M. I love that. I need to start having people tag that on. That's such a good twist. Yeah. Uh, really quickly about the RevOps Co-op, we'll be talking about it a little bit later. But do want to put in a little plug because I think I was one of the first members and definitely get a lot of value out of the community. People are super helpful. So yeah. if you haven't checked it out, highly recommend. So uh, in preparing for this, we talked a little bit about your career journey, and I found it fascinating. So can you kind of walk us through how you got to be the entrepreneurial extraordinaire? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's one way to put it. But, um, but yeah, I, I definitely have, I guess, uh, what you would call a, a, a kind of winding, a very windy path uh, to, uh, to, to founding uh, now a couple of different companies. Uh, so I grew up, I guess, you know, the, to start at the beginning, I grew up in a very small town in, uh, Wisconsin, uh, you know, one of those towns where, you know, there were probably more, more, more cows than, uh, than people. So I was not necessarily always exposed to, uh, tech, to technology. And I uh, was also, uh, you know, not the, um, uh, my parents and kind of surrounding family, uh, had never pursued higher education or gone to college themselves. So I was kind of the first person to to branch out and, and, and do those things. And uh, ultimately, I wound up in college and decided to pursue accounting and finance. Uh, because one, it was something that I was good at. And two, you know, growing up in a small town, you know, saw like, hey, accountants and finance people, they seem to be do okay, like, uh, let's go after one of those kind of safe, uh, you know, sort of career paths. So that was where I originally uh, kind of found myself uh, in, in college. And after college, I, uh, started working actually of all things as a CPA, uh, for a large, uh, global, uh, accounting firm and, uh, realized very, very quickly that that definitely was not the job, uh, for me. Uh, but I stuck with it for a couple of years. Um, and then ultimately, uh, wound up in corporate finance, uh, which was a much better fit, but definitely still just was not completely fulfilled. Uh, and so after doing corporate finance for a little bit, I actually went back to business school. Uh, so I went to Berkeley, got my MBA. Um, after that, I thought maybe I should try out professional services again. So, uh, rather than public accounting, I tried out management consulting. Uh, realized very quickly that services was not the business for me. I like to to do things, not to just plan. Um, so I wound up back in corporate finance again, and still was kind of feeling unfulfilled. And then ultimately, uh, kind of came across this one particular problem uh, a couple of years ago in the legal technology space uh, because my wife is a lawyer. So I saw this problem that she was happening, and I couldn't stop thinking about it and how to potentially solve it. And that was kind of my first foray into. I guess entrepreneurship, where I somehow, you know, came up with an idea, uh, got some people to go in on it with me, raised a little bit of money, and started my first uh, my first company. And I guess since then, there was really no looking back. Uh, ultimately, that first company did not uh, work out or or succeed. Uh, we ran it for about two years. I raised about a million dollars for that business, but just never found product market fit. So uh, shut that company down. Um, and after that, I actually joined uh, another early stage startup at the time, which was called Ally.io, uh, building OKR software. And that company uh, was a, a big a big success. Um, it was because of that company that I actually met you, Kamala, through that. Uh, met a lot of other really great people, saw a lot of growth, a lot of momentum, learned a ton when I was there. Um, and uh, when I was there, I came across another problem that I couldn't really stop thinking about and how to solve. And that was ultimately why I left uh, Ally to start 
uh, Funnel IQ and how I kind of winded up here today. So that's the uh, that's the abbreviated version of how you wind up going from you know small town Wisconsin to uh, now starting a couple of different uh, companies and, and giving it a try. So before we tie operations into all of this, I want to acknowledge the place where you started with your career and and looking at what was happening in your small town and what seemed like a stable path. Have you gotten any judgment for choosing entrepreneurship from like family and friends just out of curiosity? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So a lot of, um, you know, it's a lot of people don't, uh, you know, certainly don't really understand uh, you know, like what Matt does for work. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, it's always one of those things where, you know, a topic comes up a lot, right? Like, oh, how's, you know, how's the job going? How's, how's work going? And, uh, you know, when a lot of your family is, you know, either kind of working in a factory or on a construction site, like it's very easy to be like, yep, you know, the building is going up or, yep, went and fixed this thing today. And, you know, people know what a building is, a pipe is, you know, uh, you know, uh, things that are being built in factories. But, you know, when I try to tell them about, um, you know, how hard it is to uh, to hire developers or, you know, how how challenging it can be to try to get someone to use uh, this piece of, you know, software that, that you're building. They're just like, oh, Matt, Matt does some stuff on the computer. Um, like, don't really, <laughs> don't really know what that's about. And, uh, and yeah, it's um, definitely, you know, plenty of uh, plenty of pushback, too, especially when it comes to, uh, I guess, the lack of, uh, you know, I'll say perceived uh, stability um, that uh, can be in that. Cause most of the time, you know, 99% of what, uh, of what your day is like, your week is like um, is typically struggles, hardship, challenges, right. And, uh, and instability. And so they look at that and uh, certainly are like, why would anyone choose that uh, for, for themselves and kind of also put, you know, kind of family and other people around them um, through it. So so yeah, plenty of uh, I'll say questioning uh, for sure. But I think uh, now it's gotten to the point where there's also um, acceptance for some of the perceived craziness that I might that I might have. So intolerance, I guess maybe maybe is a better word. But um, but yeah, folks have come around a little bit. Well, you know, they see you guys are still stable, right? So oh, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. kind of had the same stuff works out. I had the same knee jerk reaction when I started my business as a freelancer it, myself. Like I had all those kind of negative self talk that sounds just like the external talk that you were going yeah. through and that I wasn't contributing enough and all of these other things. And it worked out really well. So yeah, kudos yeah. for you to sticking to your dream. Uh, yeah. That can be hard sometimes. And yeah, and stuff. Um, I don't know. I mean, stuff, it seems like stuff always has a way of, working out some way or the other, right? Like I mentioned my first startup, um, it was uh, one, there was one investor uh, that I met during that journey who I tried to convince to invest in that first startup a bunch of different times. He never did, but we stayed in touch. And then when I shut that company down, he was one of the people who I was like, hey, you know, I'll be, you know, kind of looking for something to do. Like if anything comes up, you know, let me know. He was like, oh, I've actually like, we just invested in this, portfolio in this OKR software company called Ally. Uh, they're looking for, you know, someone in operations and, and finance, like, oh, you should talk to the CEO, I'll introduce you. Um, and it was because of that, that I ended up uh, kind of joining Ally and getting to go through that whole experience. And now ultimately kind of starting this, this other company. So, um, so yeah, like all those things, you know, kind of, you know, I don't know, they, they wind up, I think, happening for a reason and things end up, uh, you know, kind of working out. Um, and so, you know, the things pay off, I guess, in some way, shape or form, ultimately, is the way that I look at it. Yeah, and at Ally, uh, being in finance and operations, I've seen operations report up into finance, but I had never really seen your role before. It was kind of a very much a blend. It was very interesting. How do you think your exposure to systems and operations, um, in addition to your financial background, set you up for entrepreneur could. Yeah. I don't know if that's the word, but we're going to yeah. go with it. <laughs> we'll go with it. Well, I think, um, I mean, it, what it, uh, I think what, you know, at Ally, when I joined, um, it was one of those things of like, all right, so like, we need help with, you know, like people ops and, and we need help with revenue ops and, and finance and legal and like all this stuff. And it was like, okay, let's call it business operations. And so 
uh, so that was when I joined was, you know, VP of, of business operations. And, you know, what it, what it meant was, you know, literally just making the company run from, uh, from day to day and really needing to understand, uh, how all the different departments, divisions, uh, worked collectively, individually, and also, uh, together. And then, you know, how to, how to drive, process, how to drive that rhythm of business every single day, every single week uh, to move things forward. And so I think my my finance background definitely, you know, equipped me with the, the tools for, you know, analytics and, you know, my strategy background to, you know, to help think strategically. Um, and then even, you know, you could say with just needing to always be in spreadsheets and Excel and everything else, right? Like you need to you know, go out and, and, and build things. And so, you know, winding up, you know, in the systems was uh, kind of naturally just uh, just what happened. But then at least, you know, to get back to your question, like on the operations side, like, you know, it's not just about one specific piece of the business, you know, it's not just about uh, kind of product, or it's not just about this line of business, or uh, not just about, um, you know, current customers, right, or new customers, implementing new customers, it's it's all of those things and understanding how things work from end to end and how you drive those teams forward. Um, and I think that was the, um, the thing that, uh, you know, I liked the most about the role was, you know, with, I think, business operations, but also just any operations professional is you really are this utility player that, you know, needs to have versatility to truly jump around from, you know, one day being in, uh, you know, being in the, uh, you know, some sort of strategic planning meeting to the next day building some financial model to the day after, um, you know, talking to, you know, current investors at a board meeting um, and to the next day being the Salesforce admin, right? Like jumping in and like, you know, supporting the sales team or the customer success team and something they need. Um, and, some people enjoy that uh, variety and, uh, you know, kind of the, um, you know, the, the, the different, every different day comes with a different set of responsibilities. Um, and some people, you know, some people don't, at least for me, I was definitely one that thrived off of that stuff and enjoyed it a lot. And I think it's kind of what entrepreneurship is, right? Like mm -hmm. every single day is going to be new. Uh, and you just got to have faith in yourself that you can, learn uh new things and try new things and and figure them out and i think that's what any entrepreneur needs to do day in and day out and that's kind of what any operations person needs to do day in and day out um as well like before ally i didn't have a whole lot of exposure to uh two tools like salesforce and everything else in the you know, kind of the rev ops tech stack but there's no one else to do it so when someone needed something i was like all right i guess i'm that guy and i'm gonna mm -hmm. figure out how to do this right so um, so yeah, I think it's that kind of mindset and, and experience that sets you up for both successfully. That's so perfect. Like I, I couldn't have guided you there any better. It's just amazing because <laughs> yeah. I think operations folks, I really admire them because at so many points in time, we run into something we don't know how to do, but we don't have the luxury of saying no. So it's this constant uh, pause and adjust, pause and adjust. And I think that's such a great tie in to what it's like as an entrepreneur running a business is you're going to run like nobody is born into this world knowing how to set up payroll or yeah <laughs> or a CRM um it's just who's willing to dig in and kind of figure that out that's really cool yeah yeah and i think like you know whether that's uh like professionally or or personally as well i think like that's the thing that i've come to realize is that um you know i never uh, I can never support, you know, when people say like, oh, well, I can't, you know, someone's like, uh, you know, oh, well, like, I can't, like, I just, I can't run a marathon. Like, it's like, well, no, you, you could, but like, you haven't tried yet. And like, it's okay. Like, if you don't want to try, like, that's, that's okay. Right. But like, it's not that you can, it's just that you haven't tried, you haven't figured it out yet. And like, same thing as like, well, I can't do Salesforce. It's like, well, you know, you can, like, you just got to try. Right. And so like, I think that's where, like, if you just flip those things, um, uh, you know, on their head, but like, also it's, it's hard to do. Right. Because I think that is the, um, like we talked about it too, which is like starting your own businesses, right? Like you, you are sometimes your own worst enemy with stuff like that of like, Oh, well, I've never done this before. What if I, what if I fail? What's it going to look like? Um, how would I even go about doing that? Right. Like you have all those same 
you know, kind of self self doubts. Uh, but yeah, just trying to uh, to to tackle that, you know, not in terms of what what can or can't I do based on my prior experience, but like, could I figure something like this out? Maybe based on you know things you've done in the past, right? And if you can do that, then you know chances are you can probably do that new thing successfully as well. Yeah, and I was laughing because my husband Lance is a marathon runner, and it's something I know I don't want to do. Yeah. Not that I couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I just do not know. Yeah. 26 miles is too much for me. Um, <laughs> the other thing that popped into my head was a Nelson Mandela quote where uh, courage isn't the absence of fear. It's persevering despite the fear you experience, something along those lines. And that's so true. Also, I know I'm tacking on yet another thought to this, um, your utility player for operations article, we will provide a link in the show notes. And for those of you who don't know what show notes are, if you're in the episode or the app for the episode, just click on the episode or tap on it, and then the show notes will pop up. I've had people ask that, so I thought I would make that very clear. All right. So getting back on track. So we mentioned the negative self-talk. We mentioned the doubts from relatives. What keeps you motivated to keep going? Yeah, well, I think um, I think a little bit or you know, a little bit, a lot of it, I think is, um, uh, I guess, just proving, I mean, it's proving others, but also like proving, proving myself wrong, right? Like knowing that, uh, you know, there's things that I never thought I, I could do that, you know, that, that you do. Um, and I think that, you know, for me, uh, you know, that's the most, that's the most exciting thing about uh, kind of entrepreneurship and, and just taking these new risks is like, you know, Hey, there's this thing that I never thought in my life. I like, I never, I never thought I could start a company before. I was like, how do people start companies? I thought you'd be some really smart, you know, like technical engineer in order to have like some really complex uh you know solution to some really you know big uh you know giant problem uh but you know ultimately you know kind of stumbled into it and figured out like how to do that and you know now i've i've done it a a, a couple of times um and even you know personally right being like oh wow like you know i have run a marathon before but at one point i, I i've never done that in my entire life it was like that would be that would be really great and then i did it and i think it's um it's the like the feeling you get from accomplishing uh, those those things that you know you set your mind to you never thought you could do and now there there you are um, I think those are the things that that keep me going and like outside of that chasing that you know call it that that feeling um, is also just you know now like I have you know two young kids of of my own and you know I want to uh, kind of set the example for them that like you know hey like you can literally do whatever you want to do. Like if you set your mind to it, you can do it. If you want to do it, like go out and try. Um, and like, that's, that's all that it takes. Right. So don't, don't limit yourself to what you think is possible because of where you grew up or what your mom and dad did or anything. Like if, if you want to do it, if you want to learn a new instrument, if you want to start a company, if you want to go out and you know run 30 miles in a row, like whatever it is, like just, like, you know, like say you want to do it and like go out and, and give it a try. Um, and even with my, my current company, uh, Funnel IQ, I mean, we're still, we're still early stage, like with every company, there's always tons of stuff um, to, uh, to figure out. And just knowing that, like, you know, setting that example, you know, for my kids and also being able to just like surround myself with people uh, to go through that journey with. I mean, we worked on a bunch of stuff with Funnel IQ and RevOps co-op early on. You were one of the first members in there. Um, you know, we've got other people on the Funnel IQ team now. Um, you know, those are relationships, right? That like, regardless of whatever outcome of the company, um, like no one can ever take those things away. And that's really what I kind of live for is like day in, day out, like the journey uh, is the reward. Um, those experiences are, are things that, you know, you'll you know, like no one can uh, can take those away from you. And those are the things that, I guess I continuously chase, um, you know, day in and day out and knowing that, you know, I'm the one who's, uh, you know, kind of what the master of my own destiny a little bit. Um, you know, I like knowing that, you know, because of actions that I take either like, you know, I did a thing, right. Or I, I didn't do a thing. Um, and to me, like I wouldn't have it any other way. Those are the things that, that get me going. 
So I have to ask, because I talk to so many people in operations who are overachievers or very high achieving people, have you found it difficult to find balance in in working too much? I mean, it's your, your baby, your company, you could spend every hour of the day and still have things to do. How do you find balance and how do you do that if you do? Yeah. So, uh, so I think it's one of, it's like everything else where you need to be intentional about it. Um, you know, same thing, right? Like if you, uh, you know, like if you, you know, said a bunch, like if you set your mind to something, right, like go out and do it. Like if you want to run a marathon, like, okay, what do you got to do? You can't just go out and run 26 miles the next day. Like you got to, you know, kind of build up to that. Um, and kind of put in the the work and and the reps to get there. And I think like the balance is is no different. And at least for me, like definitely, I, I think I learned, you know, I learned things uh, the the hard way there with my first company, where um, you know just like didn't really have uh, any of that balance. Uh, you know, wasn't uh, you know like was working a lot. You know, wasn't really there for my family or my wife or like my 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 very young kids at that time. Um, and those are all things that, you know, I, I learned from, right. And I think like, that's the biggest thing with any, any startup or, I mean, any job or anything you do personally or professionally is like, uh, you know, no set, like, don't judge, uh, your, your failure or success by necessarily the, the outcome, but like, did you, did you learn something, right. And did you repeat, you know, the same sort of mistakes? Um, and so building this company the second time around, uh, like that was one of those things that I was, um, you know, trying to do very. Uh, very intentionally um, was, you know, surround myself with a, a you know, diverse group of, of people that came from different backgrounds, different perspectives um, than uh, than I did, folks that I could, could learn from. But then also with just like, you know, kind of building the company and also setting the culture, it was just making sure that, um, you know, people knew like, you know, hey, like, anything that we can do um, in any given day is obviously going to improve our chances of success. But well, the to-do list is always going to be there. It's never going to never going to go away. But you know, your your kid's only five year old once, right? You can only walk them to kindergarten so many times. Like those are going to be the things that um, you know that 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 will go away. And like those are the things that you know you shouldn't sacrifice for you know for any job for uh, for any any career for any company. Um, and so just got to be intentional about it. Um, and that's really the way that I approach it is like, okay, like for me working out exercise is very important to just my mental health. So I make sure like block my calendar on, on days so that I can get to the gym, that I can go work out. I make sure to block my calendar when I need to bring my kids to school and pick them up and like when they've got all their extracurricular activities. And so, uh, you know, that's a, I, I approach it, you know, very much in the same way that like, if we're going to set a meeting or go out for coffee, like I'm going to block it on my calendar. I'm going to set that meeting with you. Like same way, like with my kids and stuff is like, okay, like I'm, I'm not going to do anything else right now. Um, and I think like just being intentional about it with everything else is the, the way that works for me. And I was really wanting to get your perspective in it, but from as an outsider, it always seemed to me that you did a really great job of that. Because I remember in team meetings, we'd celebrate things that people were doing outside of work. Like, uh, for example, the community leader, Erin, she's big into um, mountain biking. And that was something that came up a lot. But also making sure people knew that family and health were the priority is so important, especially with COVID going on. So I really applaud the precedent you set for everybody there yeah yeah no and i think like again that's uh you know it's one of those things that um like that's important because it's also it's part of just like you know i mentioned the journey being the uh the reward right like that's that's the stuff that um you know that that's the stuff that really matters the stuff that you put in day in and day out so i love asking this question if you could go back in time and give yourself advice what would it be yeah, I think it would have been to uh, I guess start taking risk and betting on yourself sooner. Um, and I think, uh, you know, again, maybe it comes into uh, the self doubts that um, uh, that, you know, you you kind of you put on yourself thinking that like, oh, you're not 
you're not good enough or like, oh, I didn't come from this background or I didn't go to that school or I don't have this experience or I've never done that before. And thinking that those are, uh, you know, going to be reasons to um, to stop you from, you know, from even trying. Uh, but I think the, so the thing that I wish I would have, you know, started doing more was, uh, you know, betting on, betting on myself to do like bigger, bolder things sooner, earlier. Um, and, uh, you know, just like, you know, just trying. Um, and I think, you know, there's different ways to get, you know, just creative with things about, um, about trying and, and starting. And I think actually that's one of the other things is that, um, you know, that first step is kind of the hardest one. And it's also the one that like a lot of people don't even take. So just by, just by doing that one thing, by literally just getting started, right? Like if you've got a, a startup idea, like literally just like build a landing page or website and then be like, Hey, I got a startup. Oh, what do you think? Like taking that one, taking that one step is going to get you 80, 90% farther than anyone else. Um, and there's like, uh, I think that's the other thing that, you know, I wish I would realize sooner is like, just getting started on things and trying um, is, uh, you know, there's going to be two potential outcomes, right? One is you try and it doesn't work and you wind up in the same spot that you were before. Uh, or two, uh, you wind up um, further ahead and you get what you want. Um, but if you don't try, the only outcome is that you wind up in the same exact spot. So like, why not, why not give it a shot? Um, and I think, yeah, that's where, you know, I wish I would have, I wish I would have started, you know, taking more risks kind of earlier earlier on and tried some of those things earlier on. Yeah, I think regret is the one thing I try to avoid at all costs because each time I've taken a huge risk, it's it's been the biggest catalyst for growth no matter how it ended. So, yeah. Yeah, 100%. That's that's great. So, let's leave a little bit of time to talk about the RevOps co-op. So, I'll let you give the 20,000 foot view of what the community is and the purpose behind it. Yeah. So, uh, so RevOps Co-op is a it's a community of uh, people that are passionate about revenue operations, and we've got folks. Naturally, you can you know a bunch of people in there have revenue operations in their job title, but a lot of them don't as well. Uh, so we have people from marketing, from sales ops, marketing ops. We have customer success, uh, you know, VPs of revenue, chief revenue officers, uh, founders, entrepreneurs. Just you know, if a- anyone who's passionate about operations and, and revenue operations will, uh, you know, will find their place uh, within RevOps co-op. Uh, it's a it's a free complimentary uh, community to, to join. And we have a bunch of different programs uh, that we offer. Uh, for us, we're all about peer to peer, peer to peer interactions, um, education, and I guess, knowledge sharing. So we've got a, a Slack group, we have a, a weekly uh, newsletter, uh, we write a bunch of longer form content as well, white papers. Uh, we have uh, a blog. We've got a mentor uh, mentee uh, program. Uh, we do. We have a job board. We have a bunch of like webinars, roundtables that we do. Uh, we've got in person events that we do uh, as well. We've done happy hours in person and in places like Austin. We have one coming up in New York City. Um, so a bunch of different programs uh, that that we run. And again, for us, it's all about delivering value to our members through uh, through kind of education and uh, and peer to peer interactions. Uh, and we've got about four thousand people in the community uh, right now uh, across thirty five plus different countries, fifteen hundred plus different companies that are represented. So um, lots of chatter, activity, things that are uh, kind of constantly uh, happening in there. And um, you know, feedback's been really positive from from members. Yeah, I highly recommend. There's a lot of us in there willing to give a lot of advice and time, meet with people to discuss their issues. And there's nothing more valuable than having somebody who's been in your shoes and made the mistakes and being able to tell you which potholes to avoid down that road. So really recommend signing up. I have my coworkers sign up and anybody who wants to learn more about revenue operations should definitely check it out. Yeah. And you can, uh, like, it's also great if you don't get answers to your questions, you also hear like, oh, I have that same problem. I'm trying to figure it out. And like, you're like, yes, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one who's Or business idea. Yeah, there you <laughs> if go. everyone's having this problem, how do yeah. I solve it? Yeah, yeah exactly. that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Matt, thank you so much for being on the show. Really enjoyed our chat. Where can people find you to network other than the RevOps Co-op? Yeah, so you can uh, you can find me on, on LinkedIn, uh, for sure, just search Matthew Vaughn. Uh, FunnelIQ.com is also uh, the, the FunnelIQ website. And you can also always drop me an email at uh, matt at FunnelIQ.com and then join the RevOps Co-op community and you'll find me on, on Slack uh, within there as well. So folks, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, please like, review, subscribe. Hit us up at hello at calibermind.com for show ideas, guests, feedback, anything we welcome. And for those of you looking for more great content like this, check out calibermind.com.